Hi children, chapter 17. Matteo straightened the bag on his back and beckoned her along the rooftop. When the moon comes out, you'll be able to see. He pointed and puffed out his chest. There, that rooftop there, that's where I live. It's very nice, Sophie said politely. Her eyes were shut, but it was what you were supposed to say when someone shows you their homes. Very nice, that's all. Sorry, Sophie had been gathering together her breath and her courage. She opened her eyes and then opened them again wider. You live there! It was beautiful. It was the same dizzying height as the building they were sitting on, but it was, beauty it was built of sandstone and in the moonlight it glowed yellow. Statues of warriors and women were carved into the walls. It looked like there would be chandeliers inside and men with power at their fingertips. At the top, a French flag flew from a polished silver pole. It's the law court, said Mattel. It's the most important building in Paris. You sound like an estate agent. It's true. He looked furious. It's the most beautiful building in Europe. It says so in the guidebooks. How do we get there? The gap between their building and Matteo's ho home was too wide to jump. No tree could possibly reach as, as high. If I was alone, I'd go around the back, up the oak, and then the drain pipe. Matteo took off his backpack. But the jump from the tree to the pipes takes practice. See? He rolled back his sleeve. A scar ran from his wrist to the crook of his elbow. The painful kind of practice. He opened his pack. I brought this instead. Rope. Sophie looked at the thick coil in Matteo's hand. It was a good length. Rope is heavy. Matteo must have been stronger than he looked. What's the hook on the end for? You'll see in a second. Are we going to climb? Is that what the rope's for? Sophie tried not to let the fear in her chest become audible. Matteo, she thought grudgingly, must have been born with a larger than usual proportion, portion of courage. I said, you'll see. Matteo walked to the very edge of the building and curled his toes over the edge. Sophie's stomach gave a swoop of protest, but he seemed as cool as if he was standing on the edge of the curb. Stand back, he said. He whirled the rope above his head, spat over the edge of the rooftop and let the rope fly. It hooked onto the bracket holding up the drain pipe on the other side. Matteo gave it a tug. His face had the same listening expression that Charles had around music. That'll be fine, he said. He pulled it taut and tied the end in his hand to a hook hooked nail in the wall. He spat on the nut for luck. Now we walk, he said. Sophie stared at him. You're joking. You said you wanted to see where I live. This is how you get there. It's easy. It's a string. A piece of string between the sky and the pavement. String, Matteo. Rope. From here, Sophie thought, it definitely looked like string. It looked impossible. Matteo's face in the dark was exasperated. If you want, you could try to jump from the tree to the pipe. But that would be stupid. This is safer. A tight rope. It was almost invisible from where Sophie stood, just a slither of grey in the darkness. A tight rope is your safer option. Matteo looked coldly at her over the gap. If you don't do it, I won't help you. Cowards don't deserve help. Don't call me a coward, I'm not a coward. Oui, je sais. What? Matteo shrugged, half apologetic. I don't necessarily think you're a coward. Then don't say it ever again. Look, this is easy, I'll show you. Matteo spat again and blew his nose with his thumb. He stepped onto the rope. For one second he hesitated, swaying, and then he paced, foot over foot, until he was right in the middle of the rope. His arms were stretched out, like wings, Sophie thought. His upper body moved in time with the breeze, and he looked like he was balancing on thin, on thin air. The wind ruffled his clothes and flipped his hair on end. It was the most unexpected thing in the world, she thought. It took the breath out of her.